Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Home Stutter. Well, fall is upon us for sure. And I have been working on updating my uh, homestead binder and I thought I would share with you some of the things that I have in my binder. I've done a video on it before, but just to give you some ideas on how I'm using it, I do use it a little bit differently year to year. So you can use this for your homesteading, like your true homesteading. You could use it for home management. If you live in an apartment, a condo, it doesn't matter. A lot of these things will apply to you, so I hope you'll stay tuned. got the idea of having a homestead binder when I used to subscribe oh and I'm not gonna be able to tell you which box it is I think it's called the homesteading box um, and I haven't subscribed in like three or four years so can't tell you anything about it but it was the homestead planner and log book and it actually goes through chapter by chapter and it has a lot of good information and tips pretty chicken, <laughs> but a lot of checklists and logs. But what I realized was, even though some of these, you know, you, this is a soil test log where you could do multiple entries. Some of these would last a very long time. Other of them, I'm like, well, okay, I use it one year and pff, I'm done, right? So what I did, because I did purchase this, and I think this, yeah, it says 19.99 US, um, but it does have a lot of good logs in it um, if, if you don't want to build your own. So I copied it. <laughs> I copied the things that I was really interested in. And then I'm like, you know what? There's always free things on the internet, free templates that you can download for your own personal use. And y'all, I will leave some links in the description box to some websites if you want to peruse them. I'm not affiliated. Um, these are just things that I found that I actually like. So what I did was I went to the Goodwill. <laughs> actually, I went to the thrift store and got myself a binder. And I printed off some of the cover and sectional items. And this actually came from Project Zenstead, which is now, oh, wait for it, uh, called something different. Well, I'll tell you what, when we get there, I'll tell you. Um, if you just Google Project Zenstead, it's going to take you, oh, Rooted Revival, that's what it's called. So I went to the dollar store and I got some supplies and put some markers in. And some of the templates that I found, I went ahead and copied and put in a page protector so I don't have to um, keep copying them, keep copying them. I just did it all at once for efficiency. So I did find this quick start planner that um, has like tasks for the day, meals for the day, homestead tasks for the day. And while this is super helpful, I have used so many different planners and I'm using one right now that I really like. It's just an inexpensive, I think I got it at Dollar General to be honest with you, but it works for me as well. Um, another item that I liked, and again, this is from Rooted Revival. And let me just say this y'all, you do have to go in and, I believe, put in your email address. Uh, but they have a lot of great stuff. So, and I've not been spammed because I put in my email address. But like a monthly progress report. So, if you are doing various tasks during the year. So, l let me just take me for example. Um, and I'm going to start at last November because it's probably the easiest. Okay, so I got a whole house generator. Then I added two garden beds in the spring. Now I've added two garden beds in the fall. Those might be tasks that you want to record because those are things that are long-term. Now, if you're not making those big purchases, I bought Cindy, <laughs> formal name in Cindio, my new stove. That might be something you want to record here. Or if you're working on a big project, um, 
repairing your fence, putting in new downspouts, the, it, you might want to record that as well. So I thought this was kind of nifty too. So I also just purchased some um, cheap dividers from Dollar General. And y'all, the reason I use Dollar General instead of Dollar Tree is because I have Dollar General right here in my little town. So the first tab I have here is Homestead Management. So this ooh, is the new look um, from Project v Zenstead to Rooted Revival. I liked it. So I had printed off new cover for this section. So a lot of the same items. So the progress report I have printed off for 2023. And then I really like this, the monthly project list. And I will tell you all, I have saved, let me show you. I have saved some past years project lists like this. And the reason I did that is because some of these are not one and done. A lot of these are one and do it again. <laughs> so this helped me greatly when I was coming up with my winterizing list for the year. So you'll see some blank paper in here too. Um, they have a homestead resource list. So let's say you find a really great place to buy lamp fuel and wick replacements or winterizing items or anything like that. The, your cheapest place for organic chicken feed. You can record it so you don't have to do like I just did. And I'm like, what is Project Zinstead called now? Because I do that a lot. <clears throat> just saying. All right. So... If y'all remember, I made this huge list of winterizing the homestead 2022. I did inside and outside, and, and y'all know something? Mm -hmm, that's right, it's all yellowed off. So I'm gonna save this for next year so that I don't have to rethink it. I did use previous year's winterizing tasks as a guidance, and I also, want to show you this because this is an excellent resource. So this was some old material. I'm sure they have new version. I just didn't print it off because I have the old version of winterizing the homestead like a boss. So it talks about home prep, animal prep, lawn and garden prep. And then you can record your own additional items. So Lots of great resources, and I think well worth it since you can sign up for free. I'm not going to try to put that back in. All right, so out of the Homestead Planner and Logbook, and y'all, I'll look and see if I can provide a link. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if they make this anymore. It's probably worth purchasing it just once so that you can copy it and use it every year. So some of the things that I have recorded recently, besides the gas generator, whole house generator, my freeze dryer purchase, and it has a place for you to put, um, like if it's a repair, to put who repaired it, and also to track your cost. And then like my range, where did I purchase it from, and how much it cost. So I can look back. One of the things that I have really learned and this might help y'all. Now, I'm not like on the front of my appliance, right? But when I replace something like a washer, a dryer, where you can ride on the back of it, water heater, furnace, if you just take a Sharpie and write the date on it, you may be amazed because I was shocked how long I'd had my new central air and heating unit. It was like, uh, 2015 and it seemed like, I don't know, a year ago. So that can be very, very helpful. Plus having that record. I always keep a plumbing repair record because mm, I've had my share of issues. I'm happy to report I haven't had anything. Uh, I shouldn't even say this this year. And then in here is a home inspection checklist. And I got that from the Homestead um, Planner and Longbook. So it actually has you go through each and every item like shingles, gutters, windows, door frames. I already know I need that. Siding, foundation, signs of rodents or insects, um, deck, patio, lawn, trees, shrubs, concrete, asphalt. It goes through everything. So 
you know, when you see your home every day or, or the place that you live that you're responsible for, you kind of don't see certain things. Like I'm really used to the fact that I need new flooring, windows, doors, etc. I don't really notice it, but to walk around and look, you may notice things and be able to head off a problem before it actually occurs. So I have printed a few of those. Oh, there's also a building inspection checklist. So I thought that might be nice to have going forward for the chicken coop, the run, and my little shed. All right, next section I have, and y'all, the options are endless on what you could put in here. I just like having it all in one place to be able to refer to it, is garden management. This gets used very heavily. <laughs> I have printed off just for my reference, um, an herb list, and this came from Carolyn's Cottage Garden. Um, oh, this is actually from homesteadingfamily.com. And again, y'all, I'll try to leave all the links that I can to materials that I have. But I always forget, is it perennial, is it annual? Um, for example, dill is an annual, but it's self-sowing because it go, if you let the pods go to seed, Sorry, I was about to sneeze. Catnip is a perennial. Um, calendula is an annual, so you know what seeds you're gonna need to save. But also this has the uses, and I love the Homesteading Family Channel. They have such a fabulous um, spread of a homestead, and she's, she's very, very knowledgeable on herbs and canning and preserving, etc. All right, so here's the new garden management. So what I do is, and this came from Rooted Revival, it's just a blank where you can draw out your garden design. So I put in here my 2022 and how I laid everything out, the dimensions of my bed, etc. And then I did keep garden journal. So varieties I did not like, varieties I liked, um, problems that I had like my pumpkins, <clears throat> my epic fail corn, and just my thoughts on square foot gardening, what I would continue to do and what I wouldn't. So I always think I'll remember, but my mind gets busy, very busy. I also drew out my 2023 garden because I added two beds and I just wanna have it all laid out. And I also want to make notes on things that I want to grow next year that I did not grow this year. So I wanna get an earlier start and do some spring things like turnips um, and certain carrot varieties that are um, more cold weather tolerant type thing. So anyway, this will help me. Butternut squash is another thing I wanna grow. And then I plan to use this next year. It's a plant tractor. Tracker, planting track, oh my word. <clears throat> planting tracker. So it's plant, date planted, number planted, number that germinated. So if y'all remember, I complained bitterly about Baker Creek seeds. And I, I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna order from them because they truly have a lot of great varieties. I wish I would have kept this last year because I can't remember what I had to plant two or three times. It, yeah, I don't remember. So I'm going to start keeping track of that going forward both for what I start indoors and what I direct so. So this is also free from Rooted Revival. Garden chores, weekly, monthly, annual. I kind of got that down pat. Place for your seed inventory. How cool is that? So this winter, when we're like, it will snow and ice forever and we will never see green leaves again, I'm going to actually inventory my seeds. I have them all organized in that photo storage box and figure out what I need to order so that I'm not double and triple ordering. A lot of what I ordered last year, I did not use. So some things are getting kind of old. So I need to kind of make a note of these are from 2022. So I thought this was really good. And you can also sneak in what year. This is the old way that I used to track my garden, and I can't even tell you 
what website I used, but it was an epic fail because I only could get two beds in here. But some of the things that I really liked, I popped in here to save. Um, for example, I purchased some long red cayennes that were already growing. And I have replanted, saved seeds and replanted every single year. I only purchased one plant and I have had a gracious plenty, as you all know, of peppers. Uh, this is some old Project Zinsta garden design, planting tracker, etc. All right. Animal management. So, I don't think I printed. No, I didn't print the new. So, this is new to me. And I kind of forgot that I had this. But as the weather gets colder, the days get shorter, I am not going to artificially light or heat my coop. I'm going to use as y'all know, like the tarp and extra straw, etc., to keep my girls warm. But I got thinking, you know, they're gonna start slowing down on their egg laying and they also will eat more in the winter because that helps keep them warm. They're already eating warm. So let me show you what I'm doing, y'all. I've been leaving this on the table and um, looking at my vintage ruler, the Coca Coca bottle. Coca-Cola Bottling Company, and it's a good rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I found this at my mommy and daddy's. So, it's an egg laying tracker. So, if you have chickens, it might be a good idea. Now, I can tell who lays what, except I have trouble with Fancy Ray and Jolene. So, I try to have eyes on and see, you know, who's in the coop. Marigold and Violet lay very different eggs. They're all brown eggs, but they're very different. So I've been tracking. I've been putting in here. I just put their names up here. And then I've been tracking things like low of 29 degrees for two days. Uh, we've had highs in the 70s. It's supposed to be 77 today and rain and wind. And then just totaling up my eggs. And then up here, you know, if I have to take them to the vet, I'm sure the vet would see a chicken, right? Yeah, they would. <laughs> or if they're molting, um, they kind of already molted, I think, and pretty much have their winter floof on. But I want to keep track of my purchases. So I've been just filling up the bin with uh, their organic feed, and then I just scoop it out as they need it and fill their feeder. Well, today happens to be the Azure Standard pickup day. Maybe I'll tag on to the end of this, a brief haul. I didn't order very much, y'all, but I did get my girly girls all straightened for winter. So I bought them their regular feed and I also bought them what they call scratch. It is not fully nutritious. It's a supplement only to their diet, but I think it will give them the variety they need and they can eat a little bit more. So I'll be recording that purchase, the date I purchased it, and then I can see how long it lasts and how it varies. I printed several copies month to month. All right, yeah, I printed a whole bunch of those. This is just their old version of the egg collection log. So if you don't wanna track who's, who's laying why. Um, animal acquisitions, I thought, you know, I won't remember how old they are. I remember how old Frankie is because my dad passed away in December of 2010 and I had to have my sweet Calvin put to sleep less than six months later and I acquired Frankie. So I know from my dad how old he is. I'm not gonna remember how old my chickens are. So I put in, you know, what their age was when I acquired it, where I got them from, how much I paid, which I, I bartered for them, but still the worth of the barter. Um, and when I acquired them, so I'll be able to keep track of this. Animal sales and losses. So mm, I'm not gonna sell them, but if I lose any, there we go. Animal medical supply inventory. I don't have any medical supplies for my chickens at this point, but if I decide to change that, then I've got a place to inventory it. Their health record if they have to go see the animal doctor <laughs> and I just printed a couple of those so pretty cool huh and you could do this for um they had animal trackers for like cows and sheeps and 
pigs and all that stuff. So if you have a big farm, that would be a great tool. Kitchen management, I really haven't done much with uh, because um, I just haven't. I, I'm not going to give you an excuse. So let me just tell you, I got a lot of these resources. Let me set this down because my elbow is going to sleep. Don't go, Joe. The, um, oh my word, the people that live in Utah, N not Amish, um, oh my word. <sighs> Hold up. <clears throat> Y'all, my apologies, and I'm not trying to be rude. The Mormons have great, great prepping information. Probably the richest source that I've ever found. So, you can, I'll try to find the website. You can download a 52-week storage purchase plan. So, just purchase this this week. And it has 52 weeks to help you build your stockpile. Um, and in addition, it has um, a week-by-week -week storage planner to get you to a year's supply. So, very good information. Then it has some notes of month by month. And again, I'll, I'll um, give this to you. It has storage goals. Now, I want to tell you this. If you don't eat cornbread and you don't have grain meal, don't buy dry corn. You know, it, you have to be a little bit logical and substitute certain things that you don't like, that you don't eat. So I'm never going to store a bunch of pardon me, of coconut, because I hate coconut. Coconut milk is okay, but I hate coconut. Um, some other things that they had is uh, powdered milk conversions, powdered egg conversions, Project Zinstead, so this is older, kitchen cheat sheet. There is a food preservation law. Now, y'all, I've been canning my head off. I'm almost whoa, out of jars. And this morning... After canning all week, <laughs> I put everything, I washed all my jars really good, labeled them, put them away. And I really have about a dozen quarts, about a dozen wide mouth pints, probably a dozen regular pints, and lots of jelly jars left. That's all I have left. I've never been this low on jars, so I am going to order some. I don't, have not kept a food preservation log Be because all I have to do is look at my pantry and they're all labeled and I do the exact date more than just the year. I think it might be good for me because periodically I like to go through, check all my seals. I need to do that yet, but I was waiting until I couldn't be outside anymore to go through and note what month and date that I did certain things. I know last October, I canned chicken broth. I did it this October. It will give me a cadence, if you will, of how long it takes me, um, because this has date, item, preservation method, and amount. So maybe sometimes you'll water bath something, sometimes you may pressure can it, if it is safe to water bath or pressure can. So I think this will be a big help. Your freezer inventory, y'all. I'm ashamed to even show you my freezer. I'll probably do a video on, on my winter preps, but it's like playing Jenga to get something out of the freezer. It is so full. And every time I use something, I'm like, score! Because <laughs> I've got like this much room left. So I probably should do a freezer inventory because in spite of trying my best, it is really hard not to have things get shoved back or be underneath or you're out there and you're like, um, yeah, I can't find any pork chops, so we'll just have chicken, you know, so. Pantry inventory sheets. I have kept pantry inventory. It's way out of date. I need to up it. Canned goods inventory, so like store purchase, long-term food storage. So if you're, um, you know, freeze drying and mylar bagging things and you are doing beyond a year and you want to have long-term storage, 
herb and herbal product inventory. I so need to do this, y'all. Um, here's a grocery checklist you can use. Okay, let, let me speak a little bit about this as well. This came from Sutton Stays, and it's now a charge item. I got it when it was free. It was Project Pantry. Um, it's exactly the same thing, except it has a few more checklists, like freeze-dried items. Um, so I'm going to list, and, and nothing against Lisa at all from Sutton Days. Um, I'm just going to list free resources because that's what I'm going to do. Does that make sense? All right. So that's what all of this is. Next section I have is homestead expense management. So um, you'll notice everything is blank. I have not kept this up. So garden expenses, animal and feed expenses. See, this will be really helpful. Um, I can record like the chicken coop, the run, and my feed expenses on there if I want to. Equipment expenses. So if you're buying a tiller or, you know, something new to help manage your homestead. Infrastructure. So this is more like, okay, I want to run electric to the chicken coop because I want to have a water, heated water for them in the winter. I haven't sorted that out yet, y'all. Maintenance and repair. So need to fill this out a little better. Homestead business. Okay. I don't necessarily have a homestead business, so I didn't fill anything out there. And then a miscellaneous. So one of the things I do want to do going forward is to use the expense and income management. I am selling, if you will, my freeze drying. I know because I've checked it, I know how much it costs me to run my freeze dryer. I have an oil-free pump. So my expense is straight up electricity. I know now about how long it takes to run an item. So I, and how much my Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers cost. So I have been um, doing freeze drying for other people, both of meat and eggs. And up till now, they've been uh, supplying the food, but that is definitely an income source for me. Now, can I live on that? No, but every little bit helps. It's always good, guys, to have a side hustle. In this economy, if I could give you one piece of advice, it's use your gifts and talents as a side hustle as we all struggle to get through this recession, depression, whatever you want to call it. I am going to have an upcoming video. I am going to get back to making soap. I apologize, y'all. I never did a live sale from my last soap making because I have local purchasers, I didn't make enough, and I'm basically out of soap. So I will have soaps and lotions for sale, great stocking stuffers. So I'm gonna incorporate that into my homestead business. I have really great goat's milk ready to go, uh, frozen, you use it frozen. So I will have goat's milk as well as vegan soaps coming up. All right. So there. There is a place, if you're gonna sell your garden and produce, if you're making income off your animals. So, I wanted to share as well. I do sell my eggs. Y'all, I have like a robust shelf full of freeze-dried eggs. And I'm at my high water mark again. I've got, today, I have about three dozen eggs on hand. And I eat two eggs almost every day and I'm still not using them up. So I have been selling them. I need to keep track of that. Handmade item income. Now, if y'all remember, I was doing a lot of canning mats and mitts and just, just to be transparent with y'all, with everything going on with my mom, and, and I'll give you a little update. <clears throat> my heart hasn't been in it and my time hasn't been in it. I may be doing some placemats for the holiday season. And y'all, I try to be as economical as I can in 
passing on these items to you, you know, for Christmas gift giving. So I need to get back to that. And that's all kind of part of my Sweet Honey Bath Body and Home side hustle. So, Mom, um, I've shared now my mom doesn't generally recognize me. Once I tell her who I am, she kind of goes in and out. Sometimes she knows me totally and other times because I do a lot of caregiving tasks for my mom, like brushing her hair, changing her clothes, etc. My mom perceives me as a nurse or a caregiver or caretaker from the facility. However, and this is so cute, when my mom is having a good day, you know who she asks about? Is it me? Oh, no. Is it my son? Oh, no. Would not be my son. It's the cat. <laughs> And she calls him Frankie Panky. So anyway, that's my story of why I haven't been doing as much like sewing and soap making. Plus y'all, I've been busy this year with the chickens and gardening and food preservation and health concerns. So I've been a little busy. Okay, I'm giving you all the excuses. Anyway, this is a great inventory sheet. Services rendered, I will probably never use that. <laughs> But again, this is all, this is the old version for Project Zinsta, but they have, it is great. All you have to do, you do have to put in your email address, like I said, and then they send you, I think, a password, if I remember right. And then you can set up your account and you can download these as many times as you want for personal use. Don't sell them, y'all. Miscellaneous income, annual financial overview, skipping past that. And then I just have a few extra dividers and a few sheets. In the back here, I have a customer contact list and another homestead resource list. So I think this has been a really neat way for me to get organized. And even if you just download one thing that would be helpful for you, I, I think it's worth your time to go peruse those free websites. So again, I'll try to link everything in the description box below. So let me know in the comments do you have a good source for homesteading or home management binders that I didn't mention today that you'd like to share with the group? That way I can pin comments up at the top and uh, other people can have that information as well. A couple other things I didn't tell you. I do have Clyde's Garden Planner in here. And you need all the markers, right? Finally. I have a long list, y'all. Oops, I better leave that open for the eggs today. I have a very long list of videos now that either y'all have suggested or I just want to do. So that's always a plus. Um, I have to say doing three videos a week for over two years, I was really afraid I would run out of material that I wanted to do. And so far, y'all have been so gracious. I mean, some of my videos go over like, a fart in church and others are like really great. So I hope that's okay to say. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. So, um, upcoming y'all upcoming, you know, I've never met a craft. I didn't like I'm going to try a new craft for Christmas. Now y'all, I know, I know it's not Halloween yet. We're not going to do it yet, but this year I have a goal of not purchasing anything for Christmas decor because I did take some things that were my mom's that she's not going to use and didn't want to have at the facility. So I have some new decor, but I have a new craft that I'm going to be doing with you. So you can look forward to that in November and also some handmade homemade type gift ideas for you. So, so much fun to come. Welcome to all the new subscribers. If you would kindly do me a favor, I would really appreciate this. Go ahead and smash the like button. And down below, there's a little arrow and underneath it, it says share. If you all would share a video of mine that you really like on your social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or whatever else that cool people use it, I don't know about. I'm sorry, I'm not very, um, social media savvy. 
it would really help me out. I had a goal this year of having 5,000 subscribers. I'm not going to reach that goal by December. I'm at 3,485 subscribers this morning. I appreciate each and every one of you, but I'd like to grow that and get as close to 5,000 as I possibly could. So I am going to be doing a giveaway at the 4,000 subscriber mark. So you'll want to stay tuned for that as well because we can get there. It's not that many more subscribers and by sharing, you really help me out. All right, don't forget to drop me a comment below. Love hearing from each and every one of you. If you're so inclined and you want to send me something privately, I have two ways you can do that. It's always in the description box now. My email is sweethoneybath at gmail.com or you can now mail and y'all, I'm not asking for gifts, but if you wanna send me a letter or a card or a card from my mom, some of you have asked for that. Uh, it is PO Box 218, Cedarville, Ohio, and it's down in the description box with the zip. So until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed, take care.